everybody welcome back in today's video what we're going to be speaking about is actually gaining actual muscle as a teenager no matter what you look like right at this standpoint because it's all about what you look like in the future that's facts so all of those three criteria need to be met and therefore it is a balancing act to ensure all three get equal amounts of attention but not really one more than another they all need to be balanced to ensure your progress is steady and not suddenly all really good and then it suddenly goes down because we don't want that we want steady linear progression and when it can't be linear we want it to be actual predictable instead of just up and down the place okay so let's get right into this video i'll see you there my case point is training and that the program you utilize will have a large impact on the actual progress you make throughout your actual training and lifting career that's true so as a beginner compound based programs such as five by five or kind of strong lifts or the starting strength method will work the best because it works the most amount of muscle mass over the longest range of motion and therefore you can use the heaviest weight and so you'll progress as fast as possible instead of just doing isolation based work which is going to be a slower rate of progress and overall in terms of total muscle mass involved in getting gains you won't make as much over the, the lifetime of your career so what i'm not trying to say is that you shouldn't do isolation work you definitely should do isolation work when you want to but in the program the compound lifts at the beginning should be the main focus like you should probably have about three or four isolation movements like i do do not bother with all of them because they will waste your time you will not make as much progress and i can tell you that if other external factors outside of the gym are going to be more important than those isolation lifts at first but as you progress the isolation lifts will become more and more important but at the beginning just focus on the compound list that's worth your best time progressive overload should be used during the linear progression and that's really just adding weight to the bar every single session and therefore you'll make the fastest progress in the shortest amount of time and this helps because novices have novice gains and basically they make really fast gains at the beginning so if you just keep loading weight on every session they'll literally go so fast and they will actually become much stronger in, in a much shorter amount of time if they'll put on some other program which is basically what isolation works so that's why it works very well and i do recommend it to anybody so that's actually what i did and it allows you just to build strength and muscle at the same time because you're using generalized movement patterns what do i mean by that well if you're doing a conventional deadlift you're not doing a sumo one and so you're not actually reducing the range of motion you're working the fullest range of motion using the most muscle mass therefore you can use the heaviest weight with that specific form and using five reps is also really helpful because it's like in between even though it's not 10 between 0 and 20 it's the one which you can make the most strength gains at but also hypertrophy as well as a beginner and so it works really well for that for that process okay so next time i'm going to be speaking about eating but we're going to go into a different place we're going to transform we're going to literally disappear and then we'll reappear so i'll see you then okay so the second point is actually eating and it's all about how much you eat and what you eat is usually determines how much muscle you can gain in terms throughout of your whole career and that is usually what people trip on is that eating is the least important bit well it obviously is the most important bit so I'm guessing most people know what BMR is, but if you don't, it's your base how metabolic rate. It's like basically how many calories you actually burn at rest. So like for me, it's over 2000. So it's like you take that and then you add in the activities you do like training and whatever. And you, obviously you can't really calculate your breathing because, you know, I, I calculate mine, yeah, like 50 calories an hour. Do you know what I mean? Like breathing. I don't even know like oxygen, but basically you just add on everything and it'll give you like your TDE, your total daily energy expenditure. And then that's how much you would usually eat. But you've got to add on a lot of other things like the breaking down of food in your stomach adds calories like what is going on you know you know what i mean so it's like it's very complicated but if you could do that that's a good way and that will ensure that you're actually if you're trying to build muscle or whatever you're trying to do it'll put you in that it's obviously an estimate but it's still a good idea to figure out how much you're eating in that way and that's a pretty good solid way to do it well basically all calculators use that nearly all of them but obviously that all comes down to like what you want to do if you want to build muscle you need to be in a calorie surplus and if you're trying to lose weight you need to be in a deficit like these are just really simple like concepts and it's all and when i first started it was like what's a deficit I, you know it was so hard to find out what it is it's literally just when you're eating less calories than what you need like it's just it's really simple but the reality is you might need to adjust your bmr in terms of like the what you add on to record to that like if you're resting calories of 2000 and you go add another thousand on top you probably might probably eating too much but it just depends you have to really alter it using calculators trying to calculate your bmr without using a calculator is very tricky but using a calculator generalizes it more which allows you to find out more accurately what your bmr would be and therefore like what how many calories you want to eat per day the usual recommendation for protein is usually one gram of protein per pound of body weight and this works fine for most people for trying to build muscle obviously because that's your whole weight 
including lean mass, body mass, and actually fat mass as well. So that recommendation works well for like most people. Like take for example, somebody with a high body fat and a low muscle mass, eating one gram per pound of body weight of protein would work really well because they probably weren't eating enough protein to begin with and they probably weren't eating enough food as well. So it just works for most people or like you could say normal people as well or the generalized population that works well. There are calculators available which can calculate your lean body mass, which includes like your muscle mass and your, your organs and your water instead of just fat mass, like your whole weight included in that. So they might be better if you have more muscle mass because BMI, which is also used, which isn't very accurate, that if that's used, you, you, your BMI would usually be higher if you have more muscle mass, but that isn't very accurate. So just that's a good that's a good option if you have got more muscle mass. And obviously if you've got less, well, you can just use a normal calculator. So they've got good options for everybody. I think it's good to accept everybody, obviously. So the recommended amount of sleep is eight hours a day, right? And I'd say that's the only piece of advice which I can actually agree with because all of the advice I've heard of and actually read online before has all been just completely mixed. And the, the fact is, is that eight hours is pretty good. Nine hours is even better and 10 is amazing. And I know that's difficult for a lot of people to get, but it's the truth. And if you can get nine, good, but eight is pretty good as well. Activities outside of the gym, which take up a lot of recovery time, like practicing for sports and things, does eat recovery. So do, do keep that in mind, because if you're trying to lift, I don't know, three to four times a week, heavy weight, and then you are training for say, like football practice, you will not be able to lift as much. It's just fact because your body needs to recover. Like that's, as I've said, it's not usually, it's about training, turning up, but then it's actually about recovering from the weight, which is actually what you improve from, not actually just lifting the weight. That's like the stimulus, but then you need the recovery on top of that. So just keep that in mind when limiting specific like practice. So cortisol as well is actually a, is a real thing. And that's, that can appear if you have not got too much sleep or if you're just stressing out, so like worrying, overthinking, Things like that can actually cause cortisol to rise and that can actually lead to not as much progress. So it's just better to not stress, obviously. Not why would you want to stress your body out? Just, you know, be calm, collective and relaxed. I know that's like, you know, easier said than done, but it's true. If you can be more relaxed, you'll just feel better as well. But obviously we're talking about training. So it's like, just make sure you get a good night's sleep every night and just don't stress about too many things. Just keep focusing on day by day. That's what the best thing you can do, focus on day by day progress. So keep sleep as like a main priority in the tool because I still am improving my sleep and I'm still trying to put it as a priority because you go through your day and you think you've done well and this and that, that's good, but the sleep is important. It's the last bit and for some reason, a lot of people, in my opinion, are not able to get enough and it's like, just, just try your hardest to get into bed for that time because if you do, it's all about that routine. You'll suddenly just hop into that routine and that's what, is needed and so the best thing is just to try consciously every day to get into bed at the correct time and trust me keep pushing and you'll eventually get there trust me on that you'll eventually get there through all the stuff what goes on the sad thing is though usually it takes a lot of sacrifice to get into bed at that time like if you wanted to get into bed i don't know 10 and you I mean, you've been going to bed at 12 all the time trying to get into bed at 10 you're gonna have to sacrifice things in the day and it hurts but it has to be done to ensure that because that those external factors affect other things so getting those external factors fixed, your main priorities will then become much better and more focused and they'll become better. So that's just the truth. I just thought I'd tell you guys that. It's really good. Okay, so the extra points just to end off this video are just going to be how to keep making progress over time and how to kind of reduce stalling and how to keep pushing on and, and how to make sure you keep making progress and not actually just giving up. So just as final end points, I just want to speak about stalling and plateauing. Basically, there are two ways to reduce the weight in terms of resets and deloading. Deloading is really when you just reduce the weight. Usually most people do it because it's just called deloading or they don't want to lift heavy weights or for a break. Resets are usually put down in weight and then you work back up pretty fast. That's usually because if you stall because of a miss reps or bad form, usually that's a better idea than deloading because it has a purpose. Don't, I'm not saying deloads do not have a purpose. Deloads do have a purpose in that. If people don't want to lift heavy weights, go ahead, drop it down. If you are fatiguing, if you are regressing, sure, but resets are basically the same but better. And usually anyways, it's because of external factors such as sleep and eating, which cause stalling. Very rarely, usually, do people, if they have all those things right, stall out very early in a program. Maybe some people stall out because they haven't got much muscle mass at the beginning. Fair point, I'm not going to argue that, but and overweight people maybe have more muscle mass and don't stall out as quick. 
But if your outside factors are fixed, then you know that the things inside of the gym can be, it's a more confined area basically, and it's not a searching hunt like a treasure hunt. So it's much better for the lifter. But what I would say is that just keep making progress, but ensure all your external factors I try to fix them to ensure your progress in the gym is going to be as good as possible because if that's the case then you know you're going to be making the best possible gains you can using your time in the gym and that's just a fact. Okay, so I'm just going to speak about one or two more points, which is discipline and the mindset. Really, most people don't have a lot of discipline. And so when they're pulling on or pushing on heavy weights, that is, they don't really want to, they don't really want to be there and they don't even enjoy it. And so it's like, what is even the point of actually being there in the first place? So in the gym, it requires determination to finish stuff you've started. So like in the deadlift, say, you don't just put it down on the fourth rep if you're doing a set of five and say, oh yeah, no, I'm calling it a day today. I just don't do the fifth rep. That's so stupid to do that. The thing is determination and it's hard. That's what, that is what it requires. And so if you're not capable of doing that you might as well go home but for the people who are keep pushing because truly you make progress it just takes a long amount of time and that's why so many people give up at the start so one last point i want to actually make is that this is all personal experience and that it's just information i want to share because the fact of the matter is is when you start lifting you know there's so much progress to be made but you should just believe in yourself and never really listen to what people say to kind of put you off because it's always their way of kind of you know showing how insecure they are that's what usually i think as well but one thing i would say to actually listen to is that it's actually not the program which is causing the issues it's the person and that sounds quite harsh but it's actually the truth like how the person makes the program and actually designs it and how they run the program it takes their progress it's not just the program you hop on somebody else is doing you get the exact same results because that's bullshit so i would just say that just customize everything for yourself and never truly take everything you know fully take it always with a pinch of salt as i always say and if you can always customize things it's never just in set in stone like, oh you have to train this way now like that's never the case in, in, in lifting it's always changing things is always changing in the fitness industry and so it's always going to be like that anyway so it's just like you just have to run with your idea and you know use it to your advantage but yeah i was just saying like please you know spread this information and use it to your advantage because you know i like helping other people and that's what i think we should all do if we can just all help each other why what, what's wrong with that do you know what i'm trying to say like everybody wants to just be for themselves well if that's the case the reality is you need people around you to help like you know motivate you and boost you that should already be within you but just as extra support and to build bigger things than you can do you know what i'm trying to say like massive things so it's like i just want to spread this information and you know just be positive about it and everything yeah right now i'm just like this is also another new moment for me because i'm outside and i'm recording this to be honest anybody could hear me i couldn't give a fuck to be honest with you that i'm just i'm going for it do you know what i'm trying to say i'm going for it i don't care and i thank you for watching because this is the end of the video bye so thank you all for watching i do appreciate the love honestly it's getting it's so good so i'm just going to keep moving keep going keep going to where i want to go to in the right direction fuck all these other people who try to hate or whatever it's lovely thank you very much keep it coming so thank you for watching please subscribe comment and like i appreciate it all and i'll see you in the next video coming out on saturday well actually no you'll be seeing this on that so no these i've, I've messed it all, but this is true so i'll see you on saturday take care peace and be bold Oh yeah, P.S. if you've been actually watching this long, there are actually links I left in the description. You can check them out. They basically got all different programs on, usually the ones for novices. This, this video was also specifically targeted to novices if you couldn't tell, but it can be the same similar concepts can be modified and actually applied to intermediates and advanced. So I just wanted to make that at the end of the video because most people, you know, they're probably not even bothered about that, but I just thought I'd do it. So take care, peace.